Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we're going to head over to the US once again and we're going to do my very first beer review from Illinois. This one was very kindly sent to me by Jesse from there, who's one of my long-term viewers actually, Hops the Drinker, so a big thank you to him for sending this beer to Sweden for me to try. We're going to visit Chicago today and have a taste of a beer from Pipeworks Brewing Company and this one is the Blood of the Unicorn. It's a 6.5% hoppy red ale and it should be pretty damn awesome. I'm very excited about this beer for two reasons. One is that the national animal in Scotland, my home country, is the unicorn, so I'm drinking the blood of my national animal, which is kind of cool, I guess, but also that it's a red ale, and if you've watched my channel before, you will know that I absolutely love red beers. That started with some of the imperial red beers that I tried in New Zealand, which were really fantastic, and it's kind of spread from there. I really love American reds and American ambers, so I'm very much looking forward to trying this beer, especially because they're very, very highly rated. So a huge thank you to Jesse for sending this beer over for me. Really much appreciated. And there's two others to come over the next little while, so you can look forward to those. But anyway, as is usual with my beer reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you do want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual websites are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my future reviews that I'll do from Pipeworks. As I said, two more to come. There's all the usual social media, so do check those out. If you want to see more beer reviews, subscribe to the channel. And as always, to those of you watching in the States, please do get in touch and let me know the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. Some of the, the stuff over in America really is incredible, so it's always great to try beers from smaller breweries such as this one. But anyway, to tell you about Pipeworks, so Pipeworks Brewing Company are based in Chicago, Illinois, as I told you, and they were founded in 2012 by BJ Oslin and Garrett Lewis, and the two men were actually home brewers who met when they worked together at West Lakeview Liquors in Chicago, and they were educated in larger scale brewing by Brauerei de Streuse in Oostvletren in Belgium. But in 2011 they launched a Kickstarter campaign to raise the $30,000 they needed to fund their own brewery and this was actually founded soon after in the Bucktown district of Chicago. And in January of 2013, they actually won the Rate Beer Award for the Best New Brewery of 2012. So that gives you an idea of the, the reputation that this brewery has. But as of 2015, they also have a second site on West McLean Avenue where the majority of their production now takes place. And when they moved there, they also introduced their beers in cans. Most of their beers, from what Jesse told me before, is that they were actually sold in bombers, the big 650 milliliter bottles, or I don't know what the American measurement is, but about 650, 700 milliliter bottles. And, uh, but they've started introducing cans now as well, but they'll retain their original brewery site to brew mainly sour beers as well. But these guys are very cool because they're a very experimental brewery. They, they often produce different batches of their beer and change the recipes of their beer as well. So there's a huge range to choose from, and if you check out the brewery website, you'll see there was something crazy there, like 60 different beers, maybe, maybe more than that. So you can check that out and have a look for yourself. But they do have a canned range, a regular canned range from what I gather. So there's the Ninja vs Unicorn, which you'll see me review soon. That's a double IPA. This guy here, the Blood of the Unicorn, which is a red beer. Warbird, Lizard King, which is a pale ale. Close Encounter, which is a stout. Uh, Glackhouse, which is a Belgian IPA. And they've also got Little Citra as well, which is another IPA. So they've got some good beers there. They're all rated well into the 90s on rate beer, of course. And this brewery do have a kind of cult following. So if you find yourself wanting to try some Illinois beer, I guess these guys are a very good place to start. So make sure you try some of the Pipeworks beer. But anyway, that's enough about the brewery. Let's actually get on to the tasting of this beer itself. Before we get into that though, I'll let you have a look at the artwork on this one. It's actually really cool, very metal artwork actually. It reminds me of some of these almost Japanese anime and comic book things. You can see there, there's the unicorn looking a bit rampant. You can see the Pipeworks Brewing symbol on the side there. Looks very nice. It says on the side here, Can Art by Jason Burke at Ink and Lead Designs. Well, I think they've got a very talented artist and I'm sure most of you would agree with that. Look at the artwork on that. That's really, really cool. You can see the guy in the back in his armour. That is, that's some of the coolest artwork I've seen on a beer actually. So big thumbs up to them for that. But it looks absolutely amazing. It's 6.5% red beer. One of the things that I would complain about with this actually is that they don't have the hops and malt on the can and they don't have it on the website either. So for beer geeks like me, that is always good, but I'm sure it's gonna be a good beer anyway. So let's get stuck into this guy and see how we get on with the tasting. The artwork, I'm still blown away by the artwork on this one. So I'm very much looking forward to trying this. Thank you once again to Jesse for sending this beer over to me. And just as you open it up, 
you can really smell some of the nice fruity character to this beer. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I'm still blown away. I've never seen such nice artwork on a beer before. That's really nice, actually. Some of the stuff from Omar in Denmark is really cool as well. So these guys are probably the two best breweries in terms of artwork at the moment. But as you can see, this beer's poured a really... I'm not sure how well you can see it in the light. If I bring the camera over here, you can see this little tint at the side. That's how the whole beer is coloured. It's a nice reddish coppery amber colour actually. There's a finger of a frothy, slightly yellowy beige head on this one actually. It looks really quite nice. There's some big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of the head there. But it looks absolutely beautiful. This is a really attractive looking beer. The colour is just really amazing too. A nice reddish tinted amber. It looks really really good. So let's have a look at the aroma on this one then. That is beautiful. It's got a nice orangey citrus character to it, but there's a good mix of tropical fruit in there as well. It's very juicy, that's the first thing you're going to notice about this beer. There's some grapefruit in there, I think there's a bit of passion fruit as well, I would say that. There are some of the more juicy tropical fruit notes as well. Makes me think there's maybe some, I would guess, if I'm guessing hops on this one, I would say there's maybe some amarillo in here, there's a bit of orangey citrus in there, a sort of tangerine or blood orange character coming out of it. I would say that there's probably a bit of Cascade in there as well, maybe some Simcoe and some Citra, that would be my guess because you're getting the nice juicy tropical fruits and that usually that comes from the Citra and I would guess, yeah I would guess some Simcoe in there for a the little bit, there is a little bit of a, maybe a slightly passion fruity note in there and there is a bit of grapefruit as well, the grapefruit and the passion fruit don't tend, don't smell too strong, they do smell quite juicy actually but there's a definite underlying of that kind of slightly oily tropical fruit character that you get from these American hops. It's very nice but yeah an orangey citrusy character in this one I reckon that's from Amarillo and behind that you can smell a little bit of piney resin there's some floral aromaticity as well to this beer and the malt base is very nice there's a bit of bready character in there and there's some biscuity and slightly toasted caramel malts. It's got everything you, you would expect from the American Red Ale style. Absolutely beautiful smelling beer, this one. And just based on the aroma, you can see why this brewery are so highly rated. Oh, so yeah, let's get stuck into this beer. Once again, thank you to Jesse, Hops the Drinker, one of my long-time subscribers for sending me across this mirror. I hope you enjoy the review, and thanks very much for sending this one to Sweden. Skål! Yeah, that's pretty damn awesome. There's no two doubts about that. Yeah, that's a pretty damn good beer, I have to admit. Very hoppy. There's a quite a there's a big hoppy presence on this one, but you wouldn't expect anything less from some of these American craft beers. This is a really this is a very, very good beer, there's no doubt about that. If this is the kind of the, the, the standard of all of the beers that these guys do, I can see why they won that award from Rate Beer. This is top class stuff. As I always say though, sugar the beer around your palate a little bit and let your whole mouth adjust to this one before you actually start dissecting the flavour. There's a lot going on in this one. But yeah, the middle of your palate is just blanketed with this nice kind of bready malt base. It goes right across the middle of your tongue. On top of that, you can get some caramel sweetness. And there's a bit of a, a kind of biscuity, almost grainy character as well. It's almost a bit like a Vienna Lager malt base, actually, that's in this one, which is really nice. Yeah, this is a damn good beer. Just on a few sips you can see, this is this one really is worth its rating. It, it has earned its rating, quite obviously. That's beautiful. Yeah. So as I was saying, you've got that nice Vienna, almost Vienna lager malt base to this one. The bready character, a bit of the, the kind of grainy cereal and then some of the biscuit sweetness in there. You've got a bit of kind of richer caramel in the middle of the palate too, but the hoppy character is very, very interesting in this beer. 
just behind the front of the tongue you're getting some of the orangey citrus but for me the tropical fruits actually start to come out a bit more the grapefruits and a bit of the passion fruit as well they start to dominate the palate a little bit if you just go behind that front curve of the tongue you always get that little oily bubble where the fruity character of the beer comes out and for me it's the the grapefruit and uh, a bit of the passion fruit that's kind of dominating there. There is a little bit of the juicier tropical fruit that comes out in the aftertaste and some of the, the darker blood orange is mixing in there as well. The fruity character is a big blend of things. There's not really a single element punching its way out for me. There's a good mix of tropical fruit ester and also some of the, the tangerine or the blood orange thing going on in here. This is very, very nice. You will find as well, that as your palate adjusts to this a bit more, that fruity character gets just that little bit juicier and a little bit sweeter. It's very nicely done. I'd love to try this beer on tap actually and just get a bit of a, a thicker mouthfeel to it and get more of the caramel in this one because the caramel flavour that goes with that bread malt base is beautiful. And of course when you've got the beers on tap, the, the malt base I find, they always are just that little bit thicker and the malt base comes out a wee bit more. But this is a very, very nice beer, very well balanced. For me, there's a little bit of earthy character in the back corner of the palate as well. Maybe there's been some mosaic or something used in this beer because you have that little bit of earthy character in the back corners of the palate as you come further forward it's more floral and aromatic and there's a bit of pine resin just underpinning that as well but around the sides of your palate and just towards the front of your tongue you've got a more floral and piney aromatic character in there the resins and the, the floral aromaticity work very well around the front of the tongue I'd say it's a bit smoother and a bit grassier but there is an element of floral character there too but yeah that's a really nice beer the flavours in this one blend together really quite well actually. I do enjoy this these kind of styles of beer. The red ales are very, very nice. This is an absolutely beautiful beer. Definitely worth its rating in 95. There's no question about that. Mm. One thing I forgot to mention too is since it's the blood of the unicorn, I wore my blue and white hoodie, the Scotland national colours, just since it's the national animal of Scotland. I always wonder that, who chose the unicorn for the national animal of Scotland? You have to wonder how much whiskey they'd had when they decided that, but it's still pretty cool to tell people that your national animal is the unicorn. Mm. But yeah, the blood of the unicorn does taste very nice. Fully deserving of its rating in 95 on rate beer. So once again, thank you to Jesse for enlightening me with this beer. This one's absolutely great. The, the fruit character in this one is quite interesting as well. There's, there's a, it's a very well blended flavour. I think it's fair to say that. This guy really is a very nice beer. In terms of the mouthfeel, I'd say this one's quite mid-bodied. The carbonation does have a little bit of an attack on it. And it helps bring out some of the more um, the, the piney and the floral elements of the flavour. It helps make them just a little bit more prominent. You've got a good blend of sweetness in this one for me. There's a good mix between the kind of uh, the slightly biscuity and uh, and caramel sweetness of the malt base. As I said it has that Vienna lager malt base but it's not quite as sweet as that I would say. The hoppy character in this beer really dominates as you would expect from an American beer and it's actually quite dark. The floral aromaticity and the pine resins and a bit of that earthy character too is a little bit dark in this beer but it is you know it's very very nice if you if you like these dark floral aromatic beers then you will enjoy this one. The fruity character is interesting too and again it's it, for me it's a big blend of some of the darker orange citrus, the sort of tangerine blood orange flavour and also some of these tropical fruit, fruit oils. It's quite a dark fruity character that's in this one but I mean it works very well and it tastes really nice. That's the, the main thing. It's more hot forward this beer, quite dry and quite bitter but there is a little bit of sweetness in the malt base too but for me it really leans more towards the kind of dry and bitter character. So if you enjoy that from your red ales then I think you will definitely enjoy this one. It's very nice and fully deserving of its rating of 95 on rate beer for me. So yeah, a huge thumbs up to Pipeworks Brewing Company for this one. I really look forward to trying the other ones that Jesse sent me as well. So you can look forward to those reviews in the coming weeks. 
But yeah, go and check out The Blood of the Unicorn from Pipeworks Brewing Company in Chicago, Illinois. Really, really good stuff. Awesome artwork on all of their cans, which is really cool as well. So yeah, this has been another really interesting beer review. I'll let you have another last little look at that can. Just look at that unicorn with the, the crazy night on the back. That is beautiful. But thank you once again for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Go and check out Pipeworks Brewing Company from Chicago and Illinois if you're lucky enough to live near there. Thank you once again to Jesse for sending this beer over to Sweden for me to try. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Check out my social media. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below and let me know your favorite beers from Pipeworks Brewing Company, but most importantly, do go and try them for yourselves. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you soon. Cheers once again to Jesse for sending across this beer. Catch you soon.